Do I have to wear goggles with red light therapy? This is one of the most common questions I see. Hi, I'm Dr. Viv. Welcome to our Loombox channel where we share science-based information about red light therapy. Before I dive in, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to continue receiving helpful information about red light therapy. And if you're new to red light therapy, be sure to download our gift to you, a comprehensive free guide all about red light therapy, what it can be used for, what to look out for in a device, all linked in the caption below. Now, when it comes to red light therapy, there are so many parameters to consider that affects its efficacy. The difference between a unit that delivers results and a unit that doesn't is in the irradiance and the wavelength. In order to deliver results for your skin, you really don't need a whole lot of light. So a weaker powered device like those face masks can work. However, when it comes to your joints, your muscle health, irradiance matters because this can affect how much light penetrates into the tissue. Now, when it comes to eye health, the same principle and nuance applies. The irradiance, i.e. how powerful the light is, and wavelength matters. You may have come across a study that was widely shared by many wellness accounts online. It was conducted by Dr. Glenn Jeffrey at UCL, my alma mater, at the uh, Institute of Ophthalmology, showing that red light therapy first thing in the morning may improve eyesight. Now that's very exciting and a lot of people started jumping in and looking directly into their red light therapy devices, but hold up, let's dig into the nuance first. When I dug into the study, it was clear that they used very low irradiance of light. So the irradiance was around eight milliwatts per centimeter squared, and they only used red light with a wavelength of 670 nanometers. So no infrared light was used, only red at super, super tiny irradiance for three minutes only, one to three times per week, first thing in the morning. Prior to that, there have also been some small studies looking at how red light therapy may be helpful for children with myopia, which is short-sightedness. Now, I'm definitely not recommending that you use this if you all have kids with short-sightedness because we really just don't know enough about red light therapy being um, you know, shown directly into the eyes yet in terms of safety. So that's why I wanted to jump on and make this video because if you didn't understand the nuance, you may be tempted to shine a device directly at your eyes and we don't know that that's safe yet. The studies looking at myopia only used the radiance of about five milliwatts per centimeter squared for one minute at a time. So super, super low dosage again. Whereas Loombox is very powerful. This is, Loombox is about 125 milliwatts per centimeter at one centimeter away. Having said that, distance does dilute irradiance. So if you have a very powerful device, by moving it further away, you can reduce the irradiance. And when you bring it closer, the irradiance increases. So at one centimeter away, Loombox can deliver 125 milliwatts per centimeter squared. But if you moved it further away, the irradiance drops. Again, I'm not recommending using Loombox to improve eyesight. I'm simply sharing the research. And this is why it's important to understand the device that you're using and the irradiance wavelength it emits. And so far, the studies have only been done on very few people with no long-term follow-up. So I generally don't like to make conclusions based on such a small cohort of studies. I would be interested to know where the actual safety limit is for eye health and if there are any long-term consequences in follow-up studies. But what we do know currently is that according to the International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection Standard, that's a mouthful, <laughs> but what it means is they set guidelines to protect people from potentially harmful light exposure in everyday LED products. Infrared light may deliver heat so this can lead to thermal damage in the eyes. Infrared light or far infrared light is very different in its wavelength to red light, right? So there's a nuance there again. If you read the manual for Loombox, you'll know that we recommend wearing goggles when your eyes are in the beam window. What that means is 
If your eyes are directly facing the light, then you should definitely use goggles. And this is because we tested to IEC 62471 standard. And although this particular standard classified Loombox as a risk one, i.e. low risk, they stipulated that we tell our customers to wear goggles. Now, not every single company will test their products to this standard. And so if you buy a product that hasn't been tested to the standard, you may not have been told about goggles, even though ideally you should be wearing goggles. Now, if you are a Loombox customer and missed our Kickstarter guide, check it out because I explain more about when to wear goggles in that video. So there you have it. There have been studies showing red light may support mitochondria in our eyes and the retina, the cells in the retina are particularly rich in mitochondria. So there is a possibility red light therapy may be helpful, but we really just don't know enough about what dose is optimal and what dose may be harmful. And for that reason, I don't recommend anybody looking directly into the loom box and, you know, get to know your device. I'm somebody who likes to err on the side of caution, so I would prefer to wear goggles until we need no more. Now, if you enjoyed this video and the nuanced information, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.